1995 plus 450 shipping to Ray Stevens PO Box 8250 Atlanta Georgia 30306. That's 1-800-257-1257. This is CNN. I think it's uh, pretty predictable it's probably going to happen, but uh, we don't know when. It doesn't have to happen if Saddam Hussein will play by the rules. President Bush's get tough policy with Iraq wins major support on Capitol Hill. A new team of UN weapons inspectors arrives in Baghdad. They're ready to search that Iraqi agriculture ministry. Tens of thousands of Iraqi demonstrators denounced President Bush in the streets of Baghdad. Welcome to Newsday. I'm Cheryl Atkinson. And I'm Lou Waters. Hello. Here's what's happening. Leaders of Congress came calling at the White House today. President Bush asked for and received their support of his policy on Iraq. Senior White House correspondent Charles Beerbar now joins us to fill in the blanks of the story. Charles. Lou, the Bush administration sees the tension with Iraq as only temporarily diffused, perhaps, by the permission now being given to inspect that agriculture ministry in Baghdad. The chance of a further confrontation certainly looms, and it's with that in mind that the president today invited in members of uh, the congressional delegations. Leaders of the Congress, Republicans and Democrats alike, seem to be supportive of the president's efforts with a few conditions. But fundamentally, the question is, are we uh, willing and anxious to work together on, on key U.S. foreign policy and defense issues? And the answer is yes. The president pledged his interest in doing that, and we did as well. We emphasized, however, several things. One, that there needed to be continued <coughs> consultation and information to the Congress. Secondly, that uh, the, the feeling is very strong and that there would be an effort, to, as the president has done, to work with the UN and work with our allies in achieving these goals. In Congress, Democrats in particular question the president's authority to conduct war on his own. Both at the White House and on Capitol Hill, there is a sense, too, that Saddam Hussein has got to comply with all UN resolutions. I, I think we've got to, for one thing, tell him he can't use his uh, aircraft against his own people. I think we've tolerated that far too long, and I felt from the very beginning we should not permit him to use helicopters and fixed-wing aircraft to slaughter the Shiites in the south, and of course we don't let him do it in the north with the Kurds. So I think that we need to be a little stricter with him, a lot stricter with him in terms of what he does to his own people. Administration sources say that the protection of the Iraqi people from Saddam Hussein's forces, as well as the elimination of Iraq's weapons of mass destruction, and that's the object of that search at the Agricultural Ministry, are the two most acute problems being faced by the U.S. and its allies. Lou? Charles, the politicians appear to be uh, telling us there's an imminent possibility of military action in dramatic contrast to what we're hearing from the Pentagon. What dynamics are at work here? Well, there seems to be a sense that uh, some confrontation may be unavoidable. Imminent is, of course, a relative term. Is it days or weeks? Here's what Secretary of Defense uh, Dick Cheney had to say about that. I want to be cautious here. I sense people are ratcheting this up a little bit more than it deserves in terms of uh, a sense that there's some sort of imminent action. That is not the case. No, just this was a matter of... Uh, of uh, routine consultation with the congressional leadership on uh, what we have seen uh, as a uh, pattern of behavior that we think is inappropriate. Uh, so uh, it, it is questionable in that sense, Lou, as to whether we're headed directly for confrontation, but the U.S. is positioning additional resources in the area just in case it's needed. Another element which you touched on, uh, the Kurdistan uh, situation. There are six of the uh, high-level leaders of Kurdistan meeting this week uh, with the uh, Secretary of State. They're asking for military, moral, political, and uh, economic support. What do you expect to happen in that regard? Well, I'm told that the Secretary of State, as well as President Bush, will be meeting with these opposition leaders, which includes the, uh, the Kurds from uh, the northern part of Iraq. Uh, those meetings are scheduled here at the White House tomorrow. Uh, but I'm also told that this is mostly to listen to their complaints, to listen to their concerns, that there's no additional aid for the Kurds foreseen at this time, Lou. Okay, Charles Berwauer keeping watch at the White House. Cheryl. 
In the capital of Iraq, Baghdad, U.N. inspectors are finally searching that agriculture ministry today. They came to the building looking for information on Iraq's weapons program. But U.N. officials are concerned that Iraq may have removed information during a three-week standoff when those inspectors were barred from the building. Today, Iraqi officials set up roadblocks outside the agriculture ministry to prevent journalists from watching the inspection team go inside. Rolf Achaeus, the Swedish diplomat who heads the U.N. Disarmament Commission, says the entry of U.N. inspectors into the ministry sends a strong signal to Iraq about the U.N.'s unwavering stance. This uh, Ministry of Agriculture building standoff is a symbol of a very serious uh, uh, obstruction from Iraqi side, an outright breach of uh, Iraq's obligations under the ceasefire, uh, and uh, an unacceptable breach of the ceasefire. And you also saw the uh, strong reaction by the council members. It is qu was quite clear that this uh, defiance and uh, blockage could never stand. Ikea says Iraq has promised that there will be no further interference with U.N. inspectors. As the U.N. inspectors began their long-delayed work at the Agriculture Ministry in Baghdad today, tens of thousands of Iraqi demonstrators poured into the heart of Baghdad. They chanted, Bush, Bush, listen with care, we all love Saddam Hussein. And the press secretary for Saddam uh, has denounced President Bush in print. Iraqi newspapers quote him as saying Mr. Bush is savage, barbaric, and cursed. Doctors in Rome allowed Pope John Paul II to leave the hospital today. He smiled and waved a well-wishers as he walked out of the main entrance and into his waiting car. He did not address the crowd. Doctors say the Pontiff will still need several weeks of rest. He's expected to spend about a month at the Vatican's lakeside retreat, 15 miles south of Rome. Thirteen days ago, John Paul underwent surgery to have a tumor removed from his colon. Doctors say the tumor was benign, but did show signs of becoming cancerous. Ahead on this Newsday, consumer confidence takes a dive in one of the biggest month-to-month -month losses ever. We'll have that story. In California, an FBI raid on an agribusiness giant. Agents claim one company has poisoned pasture land with toxic waste. And actress Sybil Shepherd heads to Capitol Hill to testify about Washington's ban on the so-called abortion pill. All ahead. There's a movement in this country to surrender the Second Amendment. Listen to this. There is no reason for anyone in this country, anyone except a police officer or a military person, to buy, to own, to have, to use a handgun. And still quoting, the only way to do that is to change the Constitution. That's not some nobody. That's the president of NBC News. You see, they want to repeal your constitutional right to keep and bear arms. Well, you can help stop it by joining the NRA. For just $25, you'll get a year of great magazines and member benefits, and you'll be where all honest gun owners belong, in the NRA. If you want to keep the rights your founding fathers entrusted to you... The rights the Constitution guarantees to you. The rights the NRA protects for you. Oh, no. Nice try, Ginny. What's wrong? Oh, you have arthritis? Me too. It's hard to grip your racket, isn't it? Here, my doctor told me about this. Motrin IV. It's the same medicine as in prescription Motrin in non-prescription strength. It's great for minor arthritis pain. And one Motrin IV works as well as two regular aspirin. Try it. You'll have the advantage next set. Motrin IV. The relief of Motrin in non-prescription strength. The Murine Earwax Removal System has drops that safely loosen hardened wax when used as directed, plus an ear washer to gently flush wax away. Murine, the complete medically approved system to safely remove earwax. On CNN Today, he's back on the big screen. Bruce Willis talks about his latest movie on Showbiz Today. Then on The World Today, is the government ready to research this controversial abortion pill? All today on CNN. It may be the weak economic recovery or uncertainty about the presidential election. Consumer spirits have taken a nosedive. Consumer confidence has fallen by one of the biggest monthly declines ever. That means fewer people have plans to buy. 
The index fell to 61 this month, down more than 11 points since June. China has been saying it wants to cut its dependence on Japanese automobiles. Today, China put its money on the line, striking a deal with Detroit. It signed contracts for more than $150 million worth of cars and trucks from Chrysler, Ford, and General Motors. Chrysler today announced a big turnaround in its profit picture. The company reports earnings of $178 million for the second quarter, much more than expected. The chairman, Lee Iacocca, cited strong sales of Chrysler's Jeeps, minivans, and trucks. As recently as a year ago, some auto analysts were suggesting Chrysler might go under because of the recession. General Motors has pledged $18 million to help the riot-scarred sections of Los Angeles. GM and its Hughes Aircraft subsidiary say they'll increase minority contracting in the area by $15 million, and they plan to move a small business operation to south-central L.A. That's expected to add up to 60 new jobs. The FBI claims one of the nation's largest agricultural producers dumped toxic waste in fields where it now feeds beef cattle. CNN's Robert Vito reports. After a two-year investigation, the FBI raided the offices of Agra Empire Corporation in San Jacinto, about 70 miles east of downtown Los Angeles. And this is why. There are federal violations involved, and that's why we're involved in it. A federal warrant alleges that for the past five or six years, Agra Empire illegally buried huge numbers of pesticide, herbicide, and fungicide containers that contained chemical residue in order to avoid paying the price for disposing of them legally. Authorities say the toxic chemicals were buried where beef herds are fed. This location is now being used by Agri Empire as a feedlot for cattle. Nineteen federal and state agencies are involved in the investigation that will include digging up a 100-acre site where authorities believe the chemicals were disposed. Officials say the herd will be examined for chemical contamination as will groundwater in the area. Some local residents say the charges are frightening. They're contaminating the ground, they're contaminating the whole area. Larry Miner and his family own Agra Empire, the largest grower and shipper of potatoes in the nation. He's run the operation since the 1960s. He said the charges shocked him. What about the allegations that chemicals are very unnatural? Our, our people are gone by the book uh, from day one, as long as I've been around here. Over the years, when Miner was not running his multi-million dollar farming and ranching business, he was into the business of racing and sponsoring top fuel dragsters around the country. The most famous driver to race for him, Shirley Muldowney, three-time world champion. It may not be business as usual for Minor, but Agra Empire remains open, and no arrests have been made yet in connection with the alleged very toxic waste. The results of the investigation will be turned over to a grand jury, possibly as soon as next week. Law enforcement officials say that could result in several criminal indictments against the owners and operators of Agri Empire Corporation. Robert Vito, CNN, San Jacinto, California. The family of one of Jeffrey Dahmer's victims has been awarded more than $10 million in damages. The family of Anthony Hughes sued Dahmer, a convicted serial killer, and won. Since Dahmer is believed destitute, there's no money to collect. However, the Hugheses could be compensated if Dahmer's tries, <coughs> Dahmer tries to profit from movies and books based on the killings. Dahmer currently is serving 15 life sentences. He's convicted of murdering 17 people. The Food and Drug Administration is being condemned on Capitol Hill for having what critics say is a chilling impact on medical research. Central to the criticism is government resistance to the French abortion pill, RU486. Among those testifying before a congressional committee, actress Sybil Shepherd. Only one in five American women can obtain a legal abortion in her home county. Fanatical anti-choice public officials are creating legal impediments to women's exercise of this constitutional right under the mistaken notion that this will stop abortion from happening. Representative Ron Wyden is chairman of the subcommittee holding today's hearings. He says he's concerned that the administration's antagonism toward abortion therapies is having a deadening effect on the contraceptive research and hurting the U.S. drug industry. Police have set up roadblocks and are making house-to-house -house searches in Sicily after the murder of a third mafia investigator in recent weeks. The inspector, Giovanni Licio, was shot as he drove home from work last night. It's believed at least two, perhaps four gunmen on motorcycles ambushed him. This as thousands of soldiers guarded anti-mafia investigators in Palermo and searched for fugitive mobsters in that area. Two mafia-fighting judges were killed in separate car bombings in recent weeks. 
park rangers once claimed they toughed it out because they got paid in sunset. But no more. The rangers' emerging hostility next in our Parks in Peril report. Tonight on Sports Tonight, we've got baseball and plenty of it. That series between the red-hot Atlanta Braves and the Houston Astros continuing, of course. And over in Barcelona, a day off for the men's gymnastic team of the United States. But how do they spend it? Find out tonight at 11. For news around the clock, turn to CNN Headline News. At the top and bottom of every hour, we bring you news updates from around the world. At 15 and 45 minutes past each hour, business and financial information. At 20 and 50 after, the latest sports, scores, and highlights. And at 25 and 55 after the hour, lifestyle features or your local news. For the latest news throughout the day, turn to CNN Headline News. Anytime, all the time. Check your local cable listing for the channel number in your area.